Thank you, Ray. That was wonderful. Loved all that spiritual music. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. I'm so glad that you have joined us online. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us this morning. I'm glad that we are all here worshiping together. I have a few announcements before we begin our time of worship this morning. First of all, Lent is just around the corner, dear friends, and our theme for Lent this year is Growing in Christ. It begins on Ash Wednesday, which is Wednesday, February 17th. And that day is an important day because we will have from 12 to noon an imposition of ashes for anybody who wishes to drive through the portico on the uh, parking lot side of our church. So Pastor Fa and I will be there and uh, we will put ashes on your hand or on your forehead or whatever way that uh, is appropriate for you. And you can choose and let us know which way you would like. And then at 7 p.m. that evening, our Ash Wednesday worship service will begin. And we will be working with uh, the whole theme of growing in Christ consciousness from the past and present that develops a culture for us to do more than just to know Christ. But we want to grow more deeply in growing in Christ. Each worship event has a cross that will be ever growing larger and having more distinct features, and that will be symbolizing our Lenten journey along the way. I also want to remind all of us that Ash Wednesday Worship invites you at home to have a pencil, preferably number two pencil, and some paper, and communion elements of bread and juice and wine prior to worship. We'll remind you of that um, next Sunday as well. Friends, Bible and Brew meets on Monday, February 8th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. Please note that your worship bulletin has an incorrect date. It's Monday, not Tuesday, Monday, February 8th. And our topic will focus on how we experience God. It's based on Marcus Borg's book, The God We Never Knew, plus along with some other scripture references. So everybody's welcome to join us on that Zoom event. Tuesdays, though, I want you to be aware of our prayer circle ministry that is taking place. We are sharing in the rising power of our spirits together, and we hope that that will invoke the Spirit's intercession in our world. You can join Pastor Fa for approximately a half hour on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. and also Tuesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. for evening prayer. This is also a Zoom event. So the links are found on our website in Realm and our weekly word, or you may contact Pastor Fa for more information about it. And story time with Pastor Fa is offered on Thursdays. If your child is in grades kindergarten through fifth grade, then feel free to join Pastor Fa on Zoom at 5 o'clock. And the Zoom link is on Realm, and the password is story time. So those are some of the highlights involved in the life of our church. I encourage you to look at your worship bulletin for additional announcements. Check your weekly word out, as well as the February net gives you a lot of details of the events and ministry happenings in the life of our church. And now, friends, I invite us all to center our hearts, our mind, our spirit, ready to worship the living God. Wherever you are, take a deep breath. Feel the God's presence around you. And remember this as we worship, that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at Christ Church or wherever you are. Dear friends, we come together to worship and let the bell help us to focus on God's presence.
Good morning. Join me in the opening words. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to God. A song of praise is fitting. Indeed. Because, because the Lord gathers the outcast, heals the brokenhearted, and lifts up the downtrodden. Let us sing to the Lord songs of thanksgiving. Make music and melodies to the God of all creation. God's, God's delight is in the Lord and all the majesty and holiness of the divine presence. The Lord takes pleasure in those who hope in God's steadfast love. Let us join in prayer. Living God, whose love is freely given to good and bad alike, help us show the world that it is not ourselves we trust, but you. Then our failures will not turn others against you, but will enable them to see more clearly how completely full of love you are, so that they may come to you in faith themselves. Through Christ we pray. Amen.
Good morning, children. I have had such a nice time doing story time with the kids on Thursdays at 5. It's just been a, a, a hoot. And this past week, we learned a lot of different words that meant something tasted really good, like delectable. That was one of my favorite words out of the story this past Sunday, uh, Thursday. But today I want to talk to you. I, I went on a little vacation, and I was in the woods, and I, I saw, I heard a bird, and I couldn't see the bird. I couldn't figure out where that bird was. I was looking for the bird. Well, I needed a tool to help me find the bird. So I had brought along binoculars so that I could see that bird. And you know, sometimes when we're looking for God, we need a little extra tool to help us in our prayer time. So I want to teach you a finger prayer. This comes from a book I have, people praying for peop uh, people who uh, can't sit still. Prayers for people who can't sit still. So this one's, you're going to use your thumb and your forefinger and all the rest of them. So the idea is, when you're looking for God, you need to start with yourself. Am I in God's presence? And then you start looking out there. And you start to look at your friends and your family and seeing God in them and your neighbors. And then there are civic leaders like your teachers and your principals and the board of education and the folks who make the decisions about your towns and your counties and your states and our nation. And we look to see where God is in those places too. So we start the prayer with ourselves with our thumb, and then we look out there into the people who are in our lives, our friends, our families, our neighbors, our civic leaders, like our teachers and principals, and the mayors, and the fire department, and the EMTs, and the, all the folks who make those decisions on our behalf, and we pray for them as well. So will you join me in prayer this morning? Good morning, God. Let me start with me and make sure that I am listening, that I am present in your goodness and in your glory and in your grace. And then, oh Lord, I look to my neighbor, to my family, to my friends, to the people who are out in the world, and I ask for your help. I ask for your blessing. And I ask you to help me see you in the other person. Amen. Thank you. So I wanted to lift up some joys and some concerns that we have today. First of all, welcome back, please, to Ray Edmondson. Woohoo! It was beautiful, Ray. Thank you so much. And we also, he's substituting today for Carol Bubach. And we also want to thank Carol Hunter and the quartet. The Keesis and Dale and Jenny, Wendy and Jim, thank you so much for being here today and helping us to worship the Lord. We also want to welcome back Dave Schaefer, Dan Schaefer, who is subbing in with our, our sound and video crew. Thank you so much, Dan. And thank you, Wes, and everyone who is present today to help make this worship service and bring it to our community here in Elizabethtown. Last Sunday, we celebrated a joyful and a moving ordination of Kelsey O'Brien into Christian ministry. So, ha, congratulations, Reverend Kelsey O'Brien. We want to celebrate 80 plus birthdays for today. So yesterday was George Heberling's birthday. And this coming Wednesday is Larry Hammaker's birthday. So happy birthday, George and Larry. Well done. Thank you so much for being part of Christ Church. I also want to lift up then some concerns. Um, Annette Bubach, Carol's niece, is healing in New York after having lung cancer surgery. 
We lift up Jane Hoover, who's recovering from a bo broken hip and COVID. So some extra prayers there. We also lift up Mick Steyer, who was at Lancaster General Hospital and possibly back at Masonic Village now. And we have members at home and in nursing homes and healthcare institutions who are needing our prayers, our concerns, your cards. Send them cards, give them a call, help them know they're not alone. I also want to lift up all the high school seniors who are now turning their eyes to what's next, all the decisions that need to be made, all the paperwork that needs to be sent in, uh, all the decisions that, that are coming their way now. So I want to lift up our high school seniors in particular. And I also want to lift up uh, a young friend of mine who, uh, he's in his 20s and he attempted suicide. He's home now and recovering. So I just want to lift up my friend uh, and, and his well wishes for him and his family. So thank you so much. The Lord be with you.
Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Holy and gracious God, there is a bomb, and you soothe the achiness in our spirit. Your presence, O oh God, allows for us to feel you com comforting us. It allows for us to know that you are our guide. You are the light upon our path. And wherever we might feel or experience indecisiveness or a lack of courage or the heavy weight of burdens that we carry on our hearts or our minds, there is a balm in Gilead that is promised for all of us. Let us share in that balm of yours, O God, this grace that is sufficient for all our needs, this love that embraces us and never lets us go, this power of presence that is like a deep river that is wide, your mercy, your tenderness. O oh God, you are the balm for our spiritual journeys. We come to you, O oh Lord, seeking different ways that we may place our utmost trust in you, that your presence is life-giving, that your love is all-encompassing and that we may use such powerful gifts for our journeys of faith. So we humbly pray that you would enrich us and deeply touch our spirits, move us deep within. Not only that we become enriched, but that we may be the people who share your light with others, who, when we walk in our lives and we encounter people that they may feel you within us that they may sense the love that's in us is something that we have acquired from you and that we share it with them god may it ultimately enable us to be your instruments that you use to be the people who share in the light and love that is so life-giving, it so grounds us and enables us to move through all the storms that we might experience in life and all the celebrations as well. So thank you for all of that, O living God. There is indeed a balm for our spiritual souls. Holy One, we lift to you those who are on our prayer list, those who crave your comforting presence, those who need your healing touch in whatever way that healing can come to them, those who are beyond our prayer list, people who are close to our families and our friends, and beyond that as well, we pray for people who are in leadership within our communities, our state governments and national governments. And we pray for those world leaders that we may indeed be a community, a global community, held together by your presence and uplifted by your love, that indeed your shalom, your peace may come to the world. So let this balm in Gilead, O oh God, not just be for us, but be for all in this world to live in peace with one another and in harmony with justice and fairness and equality. O oh Lord, raise us up on your wings like on the wings of an eagle as we pray together our prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, we lift up our eyes and our hearts and our hands and our ladies' pocketbooks, <laughs> our wallets, to God who has already provided for us. We center our lives, our very being, our work in God's care, in God's presence. And it's out of that relationship that we share what we have. We share with the world, with our community right here in Elizabethtown, what we have. And I thank you for the investment that you have made in the ministry that comes out of Christ Church. Thank you for your generosity. Will you join me in prayer? Oh God, here are our hearts and our hands. Here are our lives among your people. Use us as you can. Show us those who hurt. Show us the people who are in need that we can serve them without judgment and in your name through the ministries of Christ Church. Bless the gifts that are offered today. Make them exponentially your gift to the world. Amen. And so the first reading today is one of Paul's letters to the church in Corinth. So hear these words from the first Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verses 16 to 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if, I, if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Amen.
Last Sunday, we heard of Jesus starting and engaging in his healing ministry in Capernaum, which was his home base. This was a public healing opportunity for Jesus, and it took place in the synagogue. And our text today begins right where that leaves off, as Jesus left the synagogue. So as soon as they left the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Now in the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. May God's blessings and spirit be with us and bless us as we have heard these words of Scripture today. Amen. You pray with me, please. Oh God, please always be with and within us and go on ahead of us as we follow. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, for years I have thought about preaching on the topic of (laughs) on-demand, our on-demand culture that we live in, and today seems like the right time to do it. Thinking about on-demand, my gosh, we can get any TV show we want on-demand, any movie that we want on-demand, any entertainment event, all available when we want it. We can do our banking on-demand, we can do, we can get weather on-demand, We can do our shopping on demand. Everything that we order can come to us as we demand it. And so much more. You know, the saying goes, there's an app for that, (laughs) right? Sometimes on demand works and we get instantly gratified. And other times, not so much. I've wanted to get my COVID vaccine appointment on demand for weeks, but that's the problem. There's so much demand for an appointment that I can't get one, no way, no how. My embedded perceived need for instant gratification is getting hammered, and I'm getting frustrated. Supposedly, I'm in group, our phase 1A group, but it ain't happening, not anytime, anyway, anytime soon. It seems to me that our on-demand, on-demand culture can easily fuel a uber-selfishness and move us away from virtues of faith. I mean, I believe patience is a virtue. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. You can read Galatians 4.22 to capture that. And I believe that faith, hope, and love are gifts of the Spirit. You can read Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 13. And those gifts, faith, hope, and love, oftentimes have a wait-and-see feel. And I believe that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as with eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's from Isaiah 40, 31. And I was raised to believe that God's timing is never wrong, even though I might question that timing at times. I get all that. And yet every which way I look, 
I'm bombarded and encouraged in our culture and in our society to get whatever I want on demand right when I want it. If not instantly, then very close to it. So I began asking myself, what can we learn from this on-demand culture? Well, while I might be tempted to rail against the on-demand culture that we live in, perhaps we can dig a little deeper into the story of Jesus at his home base in Capernaum and see some more profound truths. Because it seems to me that the disciples of Jesus were doing their own version of having Jesus on demand, doesn't it? I mean, Jesus was told about Simon Peter's mother-in-law at once. And that at once word in Greek is euthos, which means immediately. Well, she was stuck in bed with a debilitating fever. And Jesus doesn't seem to hesitate. He came, he took her by the hand, he lifted her up, and the fever left her. So in that sense, it's good news to have God on demand for healing, for instantaneous presence, especially when we call out to God with whatever keeps us stuck in bed, whatever holds us down whatever arrests our spiritual development. So I want you to think about this question for a minute. Just exactly what is it in your life that you need Jesus on demand to come and free you up? Just exactly what is it that you need Jesus to free you up from? Right now, today, perhaps it's an illness. Maybe it's old habits that die hard. Maybe it's homophobia. Maybe it's tendencies of white supremacy. Possibly COVID. The editor of Christian Century magazine, Peter Marty, tells the story of a woman who called him on the phone to share with him the news about her 49-year-old son who was on a ventilator and not doing well after hosting a Labor Day bash with his friends. COVID had put him in rough shape. But that's not all. She went on to lament the fact that none of her children grew up to have any interest in faith or the church. She cried gently, expressing remorse that they had, quote, no idea what faith could mean at a time of having COVID in, that, in their life, or how faith could help them be grounded in their lives. But that's just it. Having God on demand can free, up, free us up from a meaningless life and ground us on the rock of our faith. Knowing God's power and presence is available to us right at any moment heightens our awareness of how much we might need God. Well-known theologian Thomas Burton wrote, we can't find God unless we know we need God. And when you take Jesus' words when he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, some have taken those words and translated them to read, how blessed are those who know their need for God. It's easy in an on-demand culture to confuse what we might truly need, that's God, with what we, we might want, material things that we can so easily acquire in our on-demand world. But God on demand can help us do the internal work of sorting all that out, a holy presence that is freeing and supportive for us. And then when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law and he had healed the man in the synagogue just the day before, all this word about him doing miraculous, wonderful healing had started to get out. And he began to receive at 
apparently Peter's home, all who were sick and all who were lame and all who were heavy burdened, and Jesus healed them all. He freed them from all of their diseases, emotional, spiritual, and physical. Everything that held them down. And when he was finished that evening, Jesus was, being human, exhausted. So after a night of sleep, he woke up early and went to a deserted place to pray for the purpose of spiritual rejuvenation. But once again, the disciples were like on demand. They wanted him right there and they began searching frantically for him. It's almost as if they wanted him to continue that good thing that was going on the night before. All that healing ministry. All that for the people in their immediate com community of Capernaum. But as typical of Jesus, he was a couple of steps ahead of them. Jesus' vision is always wider than what they perceive. He must meet the on-demand needs of others beyond the home base. There are others out there beyond the familiar comfort zones. There are others beyond the membership of faith communities. There are others beyond networks of friendships. There are others beyond the close proximity. There are others who are plagued by diseased bodies and minds, gripped by unclean spirits and demonic powers that try to hold them down. I think God always encourages us as people of faith to have wider perspectives than what we perceive initially. When we know and believe what God does, that helps to free us, and what we know about God's ability helps us practice and that's what helps to free others. We are entrusted, as Paul says, with what we know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know that it's made available on demand for us. And we know it's available on demand for others. We know that God gives power to those who are weak or heavy laden. We know that God can raise us up, even if we think we can't. Because God is with us and within us. Because God renews our strength. We know that we can be people who might bring someone else to these truths about God and Christ. Paul was so committed to that gospel. And he proclaimed it. And he had such an enthusiastic outward focus that he says, I've made myself a slave to all so that I might just win some of them. He sees the people around him, you see, as potential recipients of the gospel, accommodating himself to them so that they might receive the benefits of the Christian gospel. That is, to have a life that is spiritually grounded in Christ. To have God on demand for spiritual freedom for the good news of the gospel comes near in the lives of those struggling to be free from powers holding them down. It comes near when people reach out to others beyond comfort zones proclaiming this saving power. The good news of the gospel comes near when people set differences aside and build community. Funny, that's just the way the gospel of Jesus Christ is. <laughs> I want to share with you an excerpt of Amanda Gorman's poem, The Hill We Climb, from President Biden's inaugural ceremony. I think it beautifully captures this idea. The words are on the screen. And so we lift our gaze, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true, that even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, 
we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. The bridges we've made happens when we sow seeds of the gospel beyond our boundaries and perspectives, I think. When we empower people to know the God who is always available on demand. The God who desires to free us. The God who desires to be found by us. So we proclaim it loud. Our God is available on demand. Thanks be to God. Let us be quiet and think and reflect on this message for a moment. Friends, our God is on demand and brings us a day of new beginnings. Let's sing together. People of God, go forth from this place where you are, where you've worshipped the living God on this beautiful day, where we have felt God's power strengthening us and raising us up, where we have heard the word to call upon God, for God is available to us. God is available to all who call. So let us be people of faith, calling upon the riches and the power and the presence of our living God who strengthens us and empowers us to spread that word to everyone whom we meet. Go now in the peace and the power and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. In God's holy name we offer this. Amen.